Hello everyone, welcome to the first lecture of the web development course. I'm so excited to be here and let's see what ha what will happen today. So we're gonna go over some some HTML, some, some HTML tags, the basics, what you need to know. And then uh, we'll have a few challenges and I'm so excited to see you guys trying to do them. They're pretty simple. I just, I'm just so excited for this and can't wait to get started. All right. So first thing, first thing we have for the day, it, first thing to ha we have for the day is for you guys, some of you guys, that's for setup. So for setup, we have either use REPL.it, it's a website, or you can install VS Code. I highly suggest that if you don't have your environment already set up, then you just use VS Code. Then after that, we have what is HTML. Okay, what's HTML about? HTML is used to basically show the content that you see on the web. So what's the content on the web? Well, it's basically the text, the blog articles, that kind of stuff. That's the content on the web. Then after that, we have the HTML tag. So what's, so what's the HTML tag about? Well, the HTML tag, if we go back to the page here, uh, if we go back to the code, I mean, the HTML tag is basically the wrapper that you put everything else inside. Then after that, we have the head tag. What's the head tag for? The head tag is where you see the metadata of a website. So what's the metadata of the, of the website? It's the data that you don't actually see on the site. It's information about the site that you don't see. So let, if we go to the browser here and, uh, and take an example, if we search for anything like uh, a, nice, uh, a nice website, for example, like W3 schools, if we search for W3 schools, as you can see right there, as you can see right there, if, uh, you can see like uh, the title and then under the title you see the description. So what's the description about? Well, the description and the title isn't stuff that you actually see on the page. You don't see this stuff normally on the page, unless uh, Google is actually pulling it from the page. Then you, then yeah. So that's basically what uh, this data is about. Now, if we go back to our code, now if we go back to our code here, that's basically how the head tag works. Inside the head tag, we have a, we have a title. So what's the title? Well, the, the title is basically the big blue link that you saw that you saw before. Then under this we have the style tag. This style tag isn't really important. It's just for me so that we can get a dark themed, uh, so we can get a dark themed uh, page to make stuff simpler and easier for me to see personally. And then if we go back to our notes, if we go to back to our notes, we have the body tag. So what's the body tag about? The body tag is where the actual content is seen on the page. So what's actually on the page is in the body tag. So if we go to the notes, and I'll make these, and I'll make these available for you. And I'll make these available for you guys to see later. I'll just uh, like work on them a bit to make them uh, more usable for you guys, and then, and then we'll def I'll definitely post them. All right. So we have the body tag. And inside the body tag, there are a few interesting tags that you can use so that you can show off the page. So one of these tags is the H is the H1, H2, H3 tag. So H1, I'm a large heading. All right. So that's H1. All right. So H1 is a size of a heading. Now, for you guys who are using REPLIT, for you guys who are using REPLIT, you can open the index HTML, fi HTML file and put and put all this stuff in. If you put all this stuff in, it should work normally if you press the run button. So I'll just uh, copy this right now. I'll just copy all this and I'll paste it in the Discord. I'll paste it in the Discord in the. Uh, I'll paste it in the Discord in one of the channels here. Uh, I'll paste it. Let's see. Yeah, let's uh, let's go for web dev lecture notes. There isn't really a fitting there isn't really a fitting place right now. So if you paste this inside REPL.it or inside your or inside uh, VS Code if you have that set up, I recommend REPL.it if you're not set up yet because that's faster to set up. If you put this inside the page and and now if we save this and now if we save that if we save this code over here. So if we save, so if we save this code and uh, go back and go back and go back to the page, add and go back to the page. As you can see right there, you get the heading. So that's basically what the heading one does. Now, if we go back to our code, we can do a few more headings. Like heading two is slightly smaller. So if we did heading two and then heading three, so these are what the headings does. So these are what the headings do. If we save that, if we save that. And go back to the page. As you can see right there, you get the three headings. Each one is smaller than the other. H1 is the largest, and H6 is the smallest. That's basically how headings work. But if we go back to the code, the syntax is uh, the syntax here is really interesting. So what you want to do 
is open is open these co sort of braces and then put the tag name inside here for example h1 and then when you're done with that you open another another set of braces and then you put the closing tag inside here so that's basically how HTML tags work that's basically how you open and close tags now usually you don't want to put tags that go inside other tags in uh, in uncoordinated directions so that's basically how those work if we go a little bit slower as you can see these h1 tags here well you're basically trying to put like headings on the page h1 means heading 1 so it's the largest heading h2 means heading 2 the second largest heading h3 means heading 3 the third largest heading so those are what headings mean all right now the next point that we have the next point that we have on our list is a is a p tag what's the p tag the p tag is a paragraph a paragraph is basically when you want to write stuff so like uh, so it's just like a normal paragraph like what do you expect you think you think you need me to explain a paragraph I mean come on guys let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's make one here so I am a paragraph all right if I can spell paragraph right if I can spell if I can spell paragraph right, that that will be epic. Imagine if I could actually spell stuff. That will be amazing. Anyway, if we save that paragraph and uh, go back to the page, as you can see at the bottom right there, it says it like uh, it's the text is a bit smaller, but it says I'm a paragraph. We can zoom in if you guys want. That's not, but uh, that's how the paragraphs work. And now after that, we have a href. So what does a href do? Well, a href. How do you do a href? So you do a and then notice that you follow these that you follow the syntax here so what does a href mean well the href here is the link so the a tag is actually a link it takes you somewhere so for example if we if we said go to google here if we said go to google and uh, back in the href here if we put the link to google.com here so https colon www.google.com if we did this and save that if we did this and save that and went back to the site, as you can see at the bottom there, as you can see at the bottom, it's uh, the link color is blue, so it's hard to read, but uh, it says go to Google. Wait, let me just uh, let me just uh, make uh, let me just make everything white for the moment so that you guys can see it better. So if I made everything white and save that, uh, we'll talk about styling later. So as you can see, it says go to Google. Now if we click this, if we click this, I wrote the link wrong, didn't I? All right. Nice job, me. All right, so I wrote the link a little bit wrongly there. All right, I can let's let's just fix that. Let's just fix that. Let's just fix that right now. So if I did this, so uh, give me a moment here, guys. Everyone can screw up from time to time. All right, so if we have, so if we go back, so if we go back to the page. All right, so if we go back to the page right now, let me see where I screwed this up. All right, HTTPS. All right. Yeah, Google with triple L's isn't fun. Uh, Google with triple O's isn't fun. All right. So let's remove one of those O's and save that. And now, if we, uh, all right. Let me just uh, show you the code because I uh, I forgot to switch windows there. All right. So it says a href www.google.com. So you put this uh, you put the link inside this href. So what does an href look like? You have you have a string here. You have a string. So what's a string? A string is anything that you have between these double quotes. So these double quotes, see the uh, see the semicolon letter, the letter next to that on your keyboard. If you do that, if you do uh, if you do shift plus that letter next to the semicolon, you get these double quotes. So that's how so that's how you get them. Now inside them, you want to put the link that you want to go to. So here we have the link that's set properly. Right now, if we go here and click it, as you can see, we're on Google. So that's basically how those work. So that's basically how those work. Now, if we go back to our code, now if we go back to our code here, that's basically how links work. Now, get ready. This is the first challenge, guys. We have a lot of these coming up. Okay, I can't wait to see what you guys can do about them. All right. The first challenge, I want you guys to have a link uh, to make a link that go takes you to your favorite site. So if your site is Facebook, to make the link go to Facebook. If it's Twitter, make the link go to Twitter. Now after this, let's say that we had a block of text that we wanted to make italic. So how can we do that? Well, you can use the i tag. So if we go to the code here and uh, do i, if we did i and then here I said this text is italic. If we save this, if we save this and go back to the page, if we save that and go back to the page, as you can see, as you can see right there, the text at the bottom here next to the link, this text is italic. That's uh, 
that's basically how uh, you can make text italic. Now there are a few other things you can do with text, like uh, making it bold and making it uh, and uh, doing it like a, quite a bit with quite a bit of stuff you can do with text. So B means bold and I means ita italic. That's basically how you can how you can remember them. So let's say here B. If we do B and then if we make a B tag here, if we do B, this text is bold. So if we do this text is bold here and save that, if we go back to the site, if you go back to the site right now, as you can see right there, you see you see a line of text that says this text is bold. Now I think this is a bit small, so I'll just zoom it in for you guys so you can see it a, li a bit better. As you can see at the bottom, it says this text is bold. But guys, this isn't working right. Why are, why are all these on the same line? Well, we can fix that with the BR tag. Now, what's the BR tag? The BR tag is an interesting kind of tag. It's a self-closing tag. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you don't need two tags. For all these tags, you kind of have an opening one and a closing one. But if you wanted to... But if you wanted to, for example, have lines between these, you do, you'd use the BR tag. So BR looks like this, and then you close it like that. See how the syntax is a bit different? Right there, the syntax is really a bit different. Uh, you don't have like two tags, so it's not... So make sure that you don't do this. Make sure that you don't do this. This doesn't work. Make sure that you don't do that. Make sure that you use the proper syntax, which, a, which actually looks like this. Right, that's the proper syntax. Now if we do this a couple times, so we get, a few, so we get our nice line breaks, Right, right. Let me just uh, fix this syntax up a bit. Okay, so br. All right. So if we do this, if we do that, if we do that and say, if we do that and save it, uh, wait, wait a sec. Okay, let's see. Is this saving properly? Like, am I open? Am I opening this thing properly? Wait, wait. All right. Let's see. So the idea is you're gonna always you're gonna always have your own screw ups. So this sort of thing that I'm doing right now, this is kind of uh, this is kind of a this is kind of part of the process. So if we did a br here, and tried that out. Tried that out. Uh, it's not really it's not really working the way that I was hoping it hoping it, hoping it would work. But uh, eh, whatever. We can figure out why that's not working later. All right. So has anyone done the has anyone done the link challenge, or is that part a bit too hard? All right. Let me check the text here. Right now, no. The thing about the thing about using just br is that it's not self closing. So if I'm seeing, I'm looking at the code here. Just br alone that could that can cause you problems with some browsers that don't support it. And now let's look at a few more questions. All right. Yeah, it does work, but the thing is, it can it can cause you problems. Back to the code. Let's see what we have next on the agenda. So next, after that, on the agenda, we have the strong tag. So what does the strong tag do? What does the strong tag the strong tag do? Well, the strong tag is really quite similar to the uh, to the B tag. They're basically the same thing. It's basically personal preference. The B tag is more used for uh, the B tag is more used for stuff that's uh, actually. Uh, that's pretty old and the strong tag makes more sense because you see it you see strong oh yeah that's bold so it makes a bit more sense that's basically the idea bet between uh, behind these sem semantic tags so th that's how the semantic tags works so let's say this text is strong all right so if I save this text is strong and go back why is it this saving properly hmm. all right let's see all right so if I so if we open this with that all right, all right. So if I open this, so if I open this here and uh, and actually go back to the browser, yeah. Now it's yeah. Now it's saving properly. Hmm. That's weird. That's basically how the uh, that's basically how the strong tag works. We talked about br in a bit. It has a problem with saving. Now we have a button. So what's a button tag? Well, it's basically a button. It's what you think about. All right. So if we go back to the code here, yeah, under the strong tag, we'll add a button. So if we do button. I'm a button. So if we do button, I'm a button, and save that. Right. As you can see right now, the button is working. As you can see right now, the button is working, and it looks great. So that's basically the problem with Chrome. Uh, it's not really saving properly. I'm not sure why it does that, but eh, whatever. All right. 
back to back to the lecture. I think uh, this part is pretty simple. Now we have another challenge. Make a link and inside the link put a button. So how can you put tags inside other tags? Let's see if you guys can do that. So this guy is, tell is asking, how can I make the text bold and italic at the same time? All right, I like your question, mate. You're s I like these questions because they're smart. They reflect this. They reflect you. All right. So to make text bold and italic at the same time, here's what you gotta do. You use the strong tag, and then you can use the I tag inside that. So you can say here, I'm italic and bold. Okay. So if we save, I'm italic and bold. So if we save, I'm italic and bold, and uh, go back to the site, and go back to the site. As you can see right there, it says I'm italic and bold. So that's basically how you can make text bold and italic at the same time. You used, uh, you basically put tags inside other tags. So that's basically how that works. Let's move on to the next. Let's move on to, ne to the next thing on the agenda. All right, you ready for this? All right. So for so for the next thing on the agenda, we're gonna be talking about lists. We're gonna be talking about lists and image. But first, let's do image. Image are really really nice to handle with. Uh, Images are really, really cool to handle with HTML. They're really quite simple. So basically, what you want to do with images... Now, I know I'm kind of having a bit of code, so let's actually go a few lines below here. So you do image, and inside the image, you do SRC. So what is SRC? Here you put the link to the image. Here you put the link to the image, so your image link goes into the SRC. It uh, goes into the SRC spot, and then the alt is alternative text. So here is basically text for people who are blind and, act and actually can't see the image. Their screen readers would end up reading the text. It's a bit complex, but you can just uh, put random stuff in here. So I'm going to find an image about Warren Buffett, and I'm going to put it in, and let's see what, what kind of image you guys can put in there. Back to the image, so in the SRC, I'm going to post, uh, I'm going to paste an image of Warren Buffett. So let's see, Warren Buffett photo. I want you guys to, to create an image SRC tag. And then post your favorite uh, your favorite personality in it. I'm gonna use Warren Buffett because investing is good. It makes you rich. <laughs> all right. So all right, we're gonna copy. I'm gonna copy this link here. I'm gonna copy this link, and then and then I'll be back to the code. So if I go to the SRC tag here, paste that link. It's a pretty massive link, as you can see. It's a pretty massive link. So all right, let me see. Let me see my page. Right. So when you when you paste the link, you want to you want to also give it a width. So what does the width do? Well, you want to give it a width. Just give it a random width here. So 500 pixels. So do it. Give it 500 pixels. Just to make sure that it shows up properly and whatnot. So if we did image src, 500 pixels. Right. Let me just double check the code here. All right. So this look this looks pretty fine to me. All right. Right, so hmm, hmm. Let's see where let's see where I screwed up again. Right, so. Let's let let me delete this and just uh, try again. Image src. Right, I have image src in there. And go back to the page. Hmm. All right. Right. I wonder why this thing isn't saving properly. Right. Image SRC. Also, a, a great resource for you guys for who, who are learning. If you are interested in this stuff, then you can also always uh, visit uh, visit w3schools.com, and that's a great place to learn about this stuff. All right, so I'm gonna give it a width of 300 pixels. Uh, don't worry about pixels too much. We'll cover those later on. <sighs> Why are these images being so? Weird? Hmm. 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 I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why they're doing that. All right. All right. Let me double check. If, let me double check all my code here. I mean, it looks fine. Oh, whoa! See, 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 see this part over here. See this part over here. This. This thing over here, this part, messed up everything because this is an empty tag and it's doing nothing. So it kind of screwed us over and that's why everything was being a bit weird for a sec there. So if we remo remove that, so see those uh, marks, you always don't want to use angled brackets. You don't want to use angled brackets when you're handling uh, when you're handling uh, when you're handling that sort of stuff because angled brackets actually uh, 
because that, when you're using angled brackets, let me try to let me try to set up the sentence properly. Angled brackets are actually used by HTML, and when you actually use them, it it kind of the browser looks at your code and is like, "Hey, what the hell are you doing?" <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. It was just a typo in my case. So basically, you want to avoid that thing. And now, if I I'm gonna do the image again, image src, paste that in. If we do image src, paste that in. And uh, let, let me just go. Let me just open the page here. Wait, I'm using the Google Preview, aren't I? Nice, nice. I'm smart. All right. So let's see. Warren Buffett image. All right. I'm gonna now. Now we all kind of do mess up with this stuff. I'm just kind of going a bit fast and really excited. So that's why I'm. I'm kind of a crappy coder at the moment. All right. So. Uh, so. <laughs> all right. So if I view this image, all right. Right, so copy image location. Right, so copy image location, and if instead instead of using that, I'm gonna do image src and then paste this in, right, and save that. Now, if we go back, to, now if we go back to the page, as you can see right there, you get the Warren Buffett image, but it's uh, but it's doing this this weird thing. How can you fix that? Well, you can just add a line break before it. So if we go here, make sure that you don't use uh, braces like I did. Like I ended up having this in my code and didn't notice. I ended up having this sort of thing at the top of the code and didn't notice. That was kind of a big mistake on my side. I didn't really notice that, so that's why uh, I had a bit of weirdness. So let's do br here. And also, when, when you're asking, so I heard, I saw that some people were asking why regular br, like uh, why this works. It works, but it's not recommended because it's kind of out of principle and uh, it might work and it might not. So if we do br here to break the image to make sure that it gets its own line and uh, save and go back to the page, as you can see there, the nice uh, that nice picture of Warren Buffett gets its own line, so that's basically how that works. Now let me read to let me read to see if uh, let me read to see if there are any questions. Right. I'm glad I'm I'm seeing that you guys are really doing a nice job here. All right. Okay. So let's go on to the next process, shall we? All right. So next thing we have on the board: lists. Who likes lists? Grocery lists. Those are fun. <laughs> nah, they're not. They're not. All right. So let's see. So wait, we already did this challenge, didn't we? Okay. So we're gonna go to lists now. Get ready because lists are fun to deal with. You're gonna enjoy lists. All right. So if we go back to the, if I set this up right, okay. So basically, how do lists work? Well, lists are pretty interesting to handle. So if we go a bit down here, so that uh, things don't get a bit too complicated. All right. So if we go down here. And uh, there are a few kinds of lists when you're when you're handling uh, HTML. So the first kind is the OL. So what does OL mean? It means ordered list. So how does it work ex exactly? Well, you you do the list and then you do li. So what does li mean? Li means list item and OL means ordered list. So this is ordered list and then each item. Make sure that you have the AI tag, uh, the li tag, because if you don't have the li tag, then uh, the list items won't really uh, won't really pop up right. So let's say item. One item one. I'm gonna just uh, copy and paste this. Save it. Now, if I go, if we go back to the page, as you can see right there, under Warren Buffett's image, as you can see, one item one, two item two, three item three. So as you can see, that's the part right there. Now, if we go back to our code, now if we go back to our code, let's say that we, let's say that for item three, we forgot to put li. What will happen? So if we did item one, I'm gonna call them all item one. So deal with it. Okay. So if we did item three inside there. And save that. As you can see, you don't get the number. That's why you gotta have the li. If so, that's why that's what happens when you don't have the li tag. So uh, let's go back to the code and just put the li there. So item one. I'm gonna call these all item one. Deal with it. <laughs> all right. So after this, we have the ul. What does ul mean? Ol means ordered list. Ul means unordered list. It's that simple. See guys, it's that it's that, it's that easy. You can't really overcomplicate this. So if we do li, this will be bulleted. So item one. And then li, item two, li, item, item, item three. So if we did, so if we did all these three and saved that, and uh, went back to the page, as you can see at the bottom there, as you can see at the bottom there, you get three bulleted, uh, three bulleted items. So, so that's basically how ordered and unordered lists work. Now there, now we're gonna go through a very, very unique type of list. Okay, so now we're gonna look at this new kind of list. This one is really interesting. I bet a lot of you guys haven't seen this one. 
All right, let's see. This, not, this kind of list is uh, quite interesting. It's called the description list. As you can see, it's the description list. All right, so how can you use a description list? Well, you use DD, DL. So DL means description list. DL means description list, so that's how that works. And inside the DL, you have two things. First, you need to put the, dot, the title, the thing that you're going to put a description of. So you do DT. What does DT mean? DT means define title. All right, so, in, so if, we, uh, if we actually did that, so let's see X. All right, let's say X. And then DD, what's DD? DD means, doctor, DD means doctors of divinities. No, no way, that doesn't mean that. It means, uh, <laughs> it means define description. That's how you can remember it. So here, a product produced by cows all right so a pro wait what did i just say uh, did i just say eggs are products produced by cows bruh okay <laughs> all right a product produced by chickens okay so a product produced by chickens if i save that if i save that right now and uh, wait for it for a moment all right and uh, if we go back to the page right now as you can see at the very bottom there it says x a product produced by chickens all right so if we go back to the code uh, excuse my little brain fart. We have the upcoming challenge. Put, put lists inside other lists. So how could how do you do that? Well, I want you to put a description list, and then inside that put a DT. So just define title, and then inside the DD, I want you to put uh, inside the d defined description. I want you to put an, a bulleted list with three items. Also, UL means unordered, so it's bullets, and OL means ordered, so it's numbers. So that's basically how the lists work. All right, and then after that we have the description list. I'm gonna go the, after. I'm gonna go through this again because uh, I guess it's a bit complicated for you guys. But basically, here after uh, here after the uh, after the UL, the unordered list, we have DT. So DT means uh, me, DT means define description, and then after that DD. So that means define DT means define title, and DD means define description, and those all go inside a DL tag. So those, so that's basically how this uh, description tag works. It gives you a, it gives you an item, and then it gives you a description of it. And the description has a nice indent. So if you want to make something that looks pretty cool, you can always use that to make stuff uh, look nice. So after that, we have semantic HTML. So what's semantic HTML? Semantic HTML is really quite cool. Now uh, let let me just uh, paste my code here. I'm just gonna paste the entire code for you guys to see in. Uh, in lecture notes, I'm gonna paste the entire thing for everyone who couldn't really quite follow up. All right, so uh, in the lecture notes, right, um, all right, give me a sec here. All right, so, all right, so I'm, all right, so I posted, uh, so I just pasted our entire code as of, as of late or my code as a plate for lecture notes just in case someone couldn't really catch up. All right, so we're gonna go on into semantic HTML. Semantic HTML is really cool. So what's the idea behind semantic HTML? Well the idea is really quite simple. It's basically if all the tags, let's say that we all that all our tags were hypothetical tags. So let's say dip, let's say all our tags were dip. Alright, so if all your tags look like this this would be really confusing and useless because you don't know what each tag is doing. That's why we have things like ordered list, unordered list, description description list, uh, defined title, and some other cool stuff. It's that it's so that you can avoid calling everything the same tag and then it looking complicated, and then you have to fix it with styling. This is usually problematic because it doesn't make sense. You don't know what each section of your code is doing. So let's go f let's go through a few semantic tags. All right. So the nice, so the first one we have is header. So what's header for? Now these will all look the same because we haven't really applied any styling to them. All right. Okay. So heading tag. So we have the heading tag. So what? So what do you put in the heading tag? Well, the heading. Well, the heading tag. You want to put inside the heading tag the main content of the page. So basically, the main content that you have to deal with. So for example, let's actually go to the top of the page here. So if we go, if we went to the ha to the top of the page. All right, let's uh, put a nice section here. All right, so heading. All right, so if we did heading, and inside here we'll do h1, so heading one, the largest size heading. All right, so here, welcome to the HTML fundamentals lecture. So if we did welcome to the HTML fundamentals lecture, and save that, and uh, went um, went to the proper window. 
I went to the proper window and uh, if we flip to windows here as you can see right there as you can see right there at the very top it says welcome to the HTML fundamentals lecture so that's basically what headings are for you put the main content of the page see how you see on some of these websites you see like the main page with this the main part of the page with this uh, cool with these cool colors and that kind of stuff that's basically what the heading tag is used for and then after that we have the nav tag what's the nav tag for well the nav tag is basically where you put your nav bar so what's a nav bar the nav bar is basically that bar at the top of websites you see that you can navigate with stuff usually you want to put your links all inside the nav tag so your code is basically makes more sense to other people who are looking at it because if every, if every tag was a div then your code would uh, cause people's heads to spin and we don't really like that do we <laughs> so after the nav so after the nav tag we have a few more tags to deal with so we have the main tag so what's the main tag for the main tag is really cool the main tag is where you put the main content of your page so for example main all right so we have a picture of Warren Buffett so we may as well start talking about him but let's, uh, let's 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 put that out on the bottom here under the description list we can just do uh, main this is where your main content goes so P Warren Warren Buffett is the best investor Warren Buffett Warren Buffett is the best investor so what's the P tag for again P tag means paragraph don't forget that all right so if you go to the page so if you go to the page right now as you can see at the very bottom it says Warren Buffett is the best investor all right so that's what the main tag is for then we have the article tag so what's the article tag for the article tag is basically for when you have articles for example for example let's say you have an article here a completely random article so let's say article Germany Germany is a nice place to visit. All right, so if we did Germany is a nice place to visit and save that. This is basically let's uh, pretend that this is a complete article, but this is basically the, the kind of article that you see in a magazine and in, in a newspaper. This is basically the same thing. You want to group uh, you want to put that article inside an article tag for it to make more sense. All right. So what what if you had like a glossary? What if you had like uh, certain information that you wanted to add to the page? How can you do that? Well, you can do that with the aside. So, what's the aside about? The aside is where you have side information. So, let's say we have an aside here, Germ and you in the aside you put side information. So, let's say someone someone didn't know what Germany is. Germany is the country where the short man <laughs> where the where the short man with the silly <laughs> mustache comes from. <laughs> All right. So, if you put that in and save that and go to the bottom of the page as you can see right there Germany is a nice place to visit Germany is the country where the short man with the silly mustache comes from alright I hope you don't need that aside like I really do hope that you don't need that aside but it's just there if you need it <laughs> alright so that's basically what the uh, what an article looks like and you can group those in a section so a section is when you have so a section is when you have lots of similar content and you so for example like a list of articles and you want to group them together you use a section for that all right let me just uh, fix this up all right slash sec all right so if we do slash section let's have another article here article all right so what should we have in this article right. this lecture is awesome all right so this is our second article and uh, inside the aside here we'll have Inside our site, we'll have, uh, for example, I don't know, let's just uh, say, visit our YouTube channel. Alright, so these are like a group of articles. Now, I know they're not really proper articles, but you get the point here. So, if we go back here to the page and go to the bottom, as you, as you can see, we have uh, we have text that says, this lecture is awesome. Visit, visit our YouTube channel. Germany is a nice place to visit. Now, if we go back to the code, we have a few more things to look at. Basically, if if any of these uh, other tags don't work, so for example, if uh, if none of these other tags like nav, article, whatever, if those don't make sense, you can just use a you can just use a div. But it's preferable if you use those. All right, so that's basically how those work. And that's basically how those work. Then you have summary. So summary is where you put a summary, basically, and then you have footer. So what's footer for? Well, footer is where you put like uh, information about your site. So for example, copyrights and whatnot. For example, let's have a copyright a copyright on this site. So, for example, footer copyright copyright copyright. I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that uh, title in there. It's funny. <laughs> All 
Alright, so copyright code the universe 2020. Alright, so if we have that and save that and uh, and go back to the page right now and go back to the page, as you can see at the bottom, we have a footer that says copyright code the universe 2020. Alright, this is pretty awesome and I really like where this is going, where this is going, but you, you're kind of seeing this and you look at it, you're going like, dude, this has no style. This doesn't even look nice. Why would I make a website that looks like trash? Why would I do that? What? Well, that's because in the future lecture that's coming up, our second lecture, we'll be talking about how to style all this stuff and make it look really awesome. We're gonna basically make. We're gonna basically turn these websites that look like uh, like look that look like something that you just uh, make on the weekend that aren't that great. We're gonna make them look really nice. That's uh, the, that's going to be the topic of our next lectures. That's going to be the topic of our next lectures, and I'm so excited to start to start on those. So yeah, thanks thanks for watching this lecture, and uh, we're going to just start taking questions from now on. Also, we're going to start on a few projects. So what's the project that I have in mind for you guys? Well, the project I have in mind is for you guys to actually start making your own websites. So how do you do that? That sounds really like that sounds like really crazy. Right now we can only just do this sort of stuff. So how are we supposed to make a website? How do we do that? That that's just insane. If you if you're thinking like that, then don't worry about it. All right. So we're just gonna delete all this stuff. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sa I'm just gonna save I'm just gonna save it, and I'm gonna do this. Copy all of that, and I'll put it in the lecture notes so for you guys uh, for you guys to view. All right. So this is the entire code. This is the entire code before we changed it, and this is the entire code before we changed it, and before we start doing our next uh, challenge, which is gonna be the last thing. So basically, this one is gonna be a little harder, but I believe that you guys can do it. I'm sure that you guys can do it. So basi the basic idea is, I want you to try to use the stuff that we've talked about today. Try to use the stuff that we've talked about today and that we've done, and that you will use it to basically make your own site. So for example, like put an H1 and with your name in it, and then after that, do some other stuff, add uh, some more information, use a few paragraphs here and there, and post and post me the links to your stuff to your stuff on uh, on the homework page. Just uh, if you have if you have GitHub set up, then you can just send me a link, or you can just uh, copy paste your work your copy paste your work, and I'll and I'll check it out. Uh, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I'm so excited for this lecture. I really hope that you benefited from it. And I'll see you guys later.